I am starting my presentation now. I am going to show you only the surgeries. Now, this is a pure, pure visualization of the because the got bunched up. You can see that the, the rectus has got, got bunched up and you cannot see the edge of the rectus very well. So what you have to do is you have to inject vesicoelastic as much as possible and see that you get you are able to see the edge of this rectus very well. And this is how it comes if you unbunch it. Secondly, you should try to cross the sub-incisional area with one swing because it is a sub incision area in which the rectus is not very easily visible. And therefore, you should see that you, uh, you cross it in one swing. Now, this is a rectus trying to run off. You can see that you brought the rectus nicely up to this place. And now it's trying to run off to the periphery. Now, how do we get it back to the center? Instead of this thing, we use a 23 gauge forceps from the side port and try to get it. And now from the main incision and try to get this peripheral rectus back to the center. Because in this case, you have to maintain a deep, in a deep chamber and see that you use a 23 gauge uh, forceps, which, is, which can go through a 1.2 millimeter incision and so that you can maintain a deep chamber throughout. And uh, this is very necessary. And this is where the 23 gauge forceps are very, very useful. Now, again, this is again a CCC trying to run to the periphery. As you will see, you're going on well with the rexis. And suddenly it starts going to the periphery. You can see the edge quite well. And it's going to the periphery. We inject viscoelastic. And then try again. And apply tangential forces. But again, it is not going to the center. Even in spite of all the tangential forces with the needle. So now what we do is that we can see the edge quite well here just now. And we see that it's now pointing towards the periphery. So as it is pointing towards the periphery, I inject vesicoelastic again. And then again try with a needle. And the needle I try centripetally. I try to guide this flap centripetally with my needle. But again, I find that it's not going, the rectus is again moving to the periphery and not coming to the center. So I abandoned this and I tried with the forceps with, from the way main wound. But again, this does not work. So I abandoned this again, and then I make a side port incision. And then I use my 23 gauge capsular excess forceps from the side, from a side port, which is, which maintains a very adequate anterior chamber. And the forces are also directed tangentially. And you must remember that wherever you do this, the tearing, the, you should be away from the tearing edge, because if you are near the tearing edge, you will not get this rexus perfectly and it will go more to the periphery. Now, this is a intumescent cataract. And you see that this is a cataract in which the rexus can go to the periphery very easily. We are trying to do this with me. We make what we do is we make a small rexus.
first and complete this rexis, but this rexis is not adequate for fake wave emulsification. This is a little too small for fake wave emulsification. So we make two side ports. We have two side ports. Now we debulk the nucleus as much as we can. And then we make a nick with the capsulars, 23 gate with capsular rexis forceps. And then we make the rexis a little larger, extend the rexis a little larger so that otherwise this rexis would have definitely gone to the periphery. And so we do that on the other, other side also. Make a nick on the other side, on the dexterous rexis margin. And again, ex extend this rexis so that we have a larger rexis. And we can do a phaco emulsification very easily. And this is the rexis we've got finally. This is again a intumescent cataract. We started with this rexis. Again, it's, if we thought we had, the chamber was deep, but you can see that the rexis is tending to go towards the periphery. And before we could say anything, we find that suddenly it has gone to the we took the it's gone to the periphery. Now what we do is we try the other side. Deepen the chamber with uh, with Helon GV. Make a nick on the other side. And again, it's by the time we made a nick, it spread on the other side like an Argentinian flag sign. Now we are left with. So we complete this rexis. Now we've got, we don't have adequate space. So we try to create a space to do the phaco emulsification. You've got this little tag, which is we cut later, but before that we make a nick in the rexis with the spatula behind the rexis and then with the needle. And then we extend this rexis so that we have now adequate space for the echo. And this tag can be cut. We have three minutes more. And now Dr. Dharbans will show the echo in an extended rexis, but this is how it looked like after I had finished the case. Again, this is the the Japan blue. Uh, this the the, so the capsule has been stained Japan blue, and we have, the twenty three gauge forceps is an extremely good tool to use whenever there's a Morganian cataract, and to maintain a deep chamber without losing visc viscoelastic. And I find this is everybody should possess them it in the OT especially when you are starting a morgagnian or a hypermature cataract with a shallow anterior chamber. As you can see, it's trying to go to the periphery, but again, I'm applying tangential forces. Chamber remains formed because there can be no leakage through this small incision, which is only 1.2, and we are able to complete the lexus. So these are the ways you can, you can use to prevent the rexes from going to the periphery. Thank you very much.